gentlemen, Des Redmond. How do you say it now? Shh! Have I the right tool in your hand? Can you see him? I was going to tell you a couple of stories, a couple of true stories actually, about uh, trying to get peak of women when I was a young fella. And it wasn't easy. Like, when I was a young fella, I was big and awkward. I was about 22 and a half stone. And a big old face of pimples on me. And uh, it was very hard to uh, kind of get dates, you know what I mean? But uh, I know you just might look at me now, ladies, and say, how could that happen? So he's gone. It's what it meant to fetch a laugh, you know. But uh, I remember one time I kept asking this one, I was about waiting on the bus in the Irish town, and going to that good council college in Ross. God, I asked her 47 and a half times when she came out with me. But I remember one time, who remembers the Ritz Cinema in Ross? Hands up, who attended the Ritz Cinema in Ross? I'd say there's a few more years to remember the Civil War and that one and that's it. But uh, Jenny, I asked her anyway, and Saturday Night Fever was the movie on it, the Ritz. And uh, I says to her, will you come with me? And after 47 and a half times, she says, will you pay for me in? I says, I will. Will you buy me something out of the shop? I will. Fair enough, I go with you Saturday night, anyway. So, I picked her up and threw a whole five gallon drum of owls, spice on that. <laughs> I was preening myself all day, so I picked her up in the old father's Ford Escort, anyway, Mark too. And uh, she was from Ross Barkin, across the bridge. <laughs> and uh, I picked her up anyway, and landed up at the Ritz, and uh, I was after investing in the jumbo seat. Do you remember the jumbo seats? They hooked in the back wall. <laughs> I says, there's going to be action got tonight. I, says, I was after eight, spending £8.50 on the jumbo seat. I changed for the top shop anyway. But I don't know if you remember, the, the, the Ritz Cinema was, was run by a husband and wife, and an uncle was the usher, the fellow with the torch. And they were all from Ras Bach. And I said, and I, I'll never forget Shami. The fashion ocean. He was a serious man. He took no out, there was no intimacy allowed. At all. But why didn't know there was going to be no intimacy anyway? But I sent her up to the jumbo sea with the ticket and I said, I'll go to the shop. I said, I'll get you a few yokes. So I went out to the shop anyway. And the, the husband and wife team were running the shop. And there was a over out one on between the two. I'll never forget. This is only in passing now, this is not the main story. <laughs> Jesus. They were there, and there was a over out going on. And the husband says, Jesus, he says, if you die before me, I know I'm going to put on your gravestone. Oh, yeah, she says, what's that? Here lies my wife, cold and sad. She turned to him and he says, Well, I'll tell you one thing, if you die first and you fetch it, really, <laughs> I want to read on your gravestone. Here lies my husband, stiff at last. <laughs> I queued up, I queued up, and I bought a can of his yarns and a corner of your leg. I said, had, had no tears left on the head on the way we said anything. So we landed into the cinema anyway, with the Corley Worley and Fizzy on. I kind of, I didn't walk in a kind of song. And I sat down beside her and I handed her the Corley Worley in the kind of arch. And she says, I tell you, she has some ground rules here. She says, she says you see that light? She was after putting a fucking white chalk line down the middle of the jungle. So, <laughs> if any part of you cross that line, whether it be a fucking hand leg or a toenail, I'll fucking kill you, she says. You know where this is going, then, like, I was, 
there was going to be no action that night. But uh, that was better than anybody did in the store. But the next thing, I was talking to a uh, fella, Sean Bio Maureen. He was from Tulla. And he was, he was down in the queue for the Corley Orleys. He was not in the Corley Orleys. And uh, he, he, was, he was in the jumbo seat beside me. Oh God, he was in, he was, he was in pure action. He was, he had this one. The freaking uh, rooting wasn't gone off the screen when he was, oh jeez, he was into this one. Really well. But Shabby the usher from back up with the torch. And he lit him up, oh God, he was, in action in the midway. And that was adding the mic for a stretch and I couldn't cross the white line. But I uh, had up the torch and we lead in on this fella. And he says, hey boss, he says, he says, stop that and get the feck out of here. And your man says in a great holler hat, he says, what am I doing wrong? I'm only naked, he says. <laughs> Oh, naked, are you? says Shami. Well, I'll tell you what you'll do now, boss, he says. Put that neck back in your trousers. <laughs> and get it back. <laughs> but, uh, Jesus, uh, <laughs> later on that year, I was going to leave in at the time. But later on that year, I went away to Cork in college, down in Cork. <laughs> and uh, I remember I went down in September and I didn't come back to Christmas. <laughs> But I only brought a kind of a little end bag full of toes. You know, I mean, know why you'd never wash out when you were in college, like you wouldn't have time to be studying to an hour. <laughs> but uh, Jesus, I was there anyway, and I was going to go home on the bus because I was completely broke. The 20, the, about the 22nd of December. And the next thing, the grand come in for the next three months, so thanks be to God. 333 pounds, old square happy. <laughs> But I said, heck it, they used to have this old Christmas ball for the, for the students, like, in the Grand Parade Hotel, on the Grand Parade in Cork, like. And I said, heck it, they go to that and they count to have the money. But the biggest problem, clothes were scarce, well, clean ones, I know. <laughs> and I was after throwing old spice on the whole basket and giving them a shake and trying to pick the best out of it. But, like, Starting with the footwear, I'm not telling you this is honest to God truth. Starting with the footwear, I had a pair of them uh, red Converse boo runners. You know them red ones? Look, like, they, they were nice, like, you know? Standard disco gear. But then the kind of the fashion got a bit shook after that. The only thing I could find in the way of socks was a pair of football, uh, Adamstown football socks. The black and amber. I had them on. They were the cleanest thing I could find. <laughs> and then, uh, the only other thing I had, I had an old interview down there for a time for an old part-time job. At the bottom of a blue pinstripe soup. 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 So it was like soup. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of short, I mean. It was like sports and about a foot of the feckin' Adamstown GA socks. <laughs> and it was kind of bent into it anyway. And on top then, a brown duffel coat. No clean shot, just a duffel for <laughs> So I bet half to the disco with half the 333 pound that I had. And uh, I was sitting down at the counter and do you know I was fear speck and shy like at the time and I was there having a few pints and this gas about the power of drink like there was this one down in the corner, oh jeez lad, she was gorgeous. She had to be a sister of Angelina Jones. <laughs> She was a, a blonde version. Like, you couldn't see the rest of her head with the lips. Like, she was. <laughs> but, uh, I was there after three or four points anyway, saying she wouldn't leave me at all. I wouldn't be in her league. Seven points. I think she might like me. <laughs> By the twelfth point, she can't live without me. <laughs> So, Jesus, I was sweating hard in the never tougher court. I said, thank you, I'm going to make a play for this one. And I was watching her all night and she was calling everyone away, like, no, 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 no dance with anyone. And I said, she, she's after spotting me now. And she wants me. So, 
but he stabbed him over towards him. And Jesus sweat was running off me and threw two fistfuls into the hair for sure that back out of the way. And I hit it over. I felt like a fight or point. Locked and loaded. Inside. But like, well, I didn't really think about it. I wasn't thinking driving the thinking fight up there. I was driving a brown duffel. <laughs> so I thought that across all that kind of the slow, hairy ass walk, I do have a slow motion, you know, and across this side. Like he had a turn up under each ox. <laughs> Halfway across the room, there was a lump of mistletoe up on the roof, and I caught it for added for the inspiration. I caught it, and I brought it with me, and I landed up against her. And I went, and I says to her, "Will you kiss me under the mistletoe?" And she had her jaw dropped the minute she looked at me. I thought this is going when she's in awe. The cousin was seeing a pure shock. <laughs> I says to her, will you kiss me under the mistletoe? And she looked at me. Kiss you under the mistletoe, is it? And she says, to be quite honest with you know, but I wouldn't kiss you under a general understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Good luck. <laughs>